What's up, East Texas Cigar Tribe, sitting here with my boy Smoke. We are at Tobacco Junction in Tyler, Texas on True Highway. Uh, got a little pickup, picked up a few enjoyable sticks for me, picked up a little uh, Perdomo uh, Maduro sample pack, um, picked up some cigars that we're going to review for $2 Tuesday that fit in that category of, you know, $2.99 or below. Some are right there is where we're trying to stay. We don't want to get anything for sure above three, three oh five. We're trying to keep it with a two in front of it. That's why it's called two dollar Tuesday. But we're back here in the we're back here in the lounge area. So they got a great lounge. I'll give you guys a quick tour. So they got coffee machines. They've got lockers. You know, I was just talking to Garrett out front, who is one of the one of the managers that, that helped manage the place. I'm not sure if he's the manager, but he's a great dude, knows a lot about cigars. And we were talking about, you know, what they've got going. And I was telling him that, you know, he said, you like it enough to come back and speak to the devil. There's Garrett now, Garrett. Hey, what's up guys? So we were talking about it. You know, I've been to a lot of, a lot of places and smoked a lot of cigars around the country uh, and in other countries. And I'm gonna be real honest with you. A lot of them are real pretentious and you know, that's fine if that's what you're about. And you know, I enjoy as much as the next guy, but there's a time to go in and enjoy a cigar just with, you know, with no pretense. You just want to go enjoy the culture with other folks. And so that's kind of what we're doing right now. So we're getting ready to, uh, to smoke up right here at their, uh, at their VIP lounge. And so long and short of it, What are we gonna smoke? We're gonna smoke these expensive sticks. Yeah. So uh, two dollar Tuesday. Sticks. This ain't two dollar Tuesday, baby. We're gonna smoke a Padrone. Which Padrone did we want to buy? We wound up getting the uh, 1926. That's uh, Perfecto. Here, let me take it out of the wrap. We're gonna smoke the same stick and review them. It's a 1926 Padrone Perfecto 80 series. Uh, and on top of that, these guys age sticks. So they got a, they've got they got a couple of walk-ins and they got a couple of humidors that are slide glass humidors. And what they do is they actually set them back. So they've been in business long enough that they're actually aging them for you. So you got aged already tobacco that this is rolled with. And now you're gonna take this aged tobacco and you're gonna compound that by setting it in a super, super duper controlled I'm not sure where, if they're at 70 and 70 on 70 degrees and 70 uh, relative humidity RH or what, but nonetheless, that's what they've done for us. So I'm even going to, this is a $32.50 cigar, and I'm going to try to cut this bad boy with my brand new V cutter by Zycar, and supposedly I can do this. So you know what? We're going to try it out right here in front, and I'm going to see how this works. I could ruin, right now, we've got the potential to ruin a near $35 cigar. But you know what, the truth is I won't ruin it. Because I'm gonna tell you a little secret that nobody knows. I don't want you to think less of me, but I have gotten so toasted. Not that I would ever say that anybody should ever drink alcohol, but I got so toasted once, I got talking, talking story, and I cut a cigar, and I, when, I, when I, I lit it, I realized, dude, I lit the wrong end. But you know what? I smoked it anyway, so I'm not real concerned. Once again, guys, so Perfecto. Looks like a torpedo, but both ends is going on. So you don't ever have to cut the end that's already cut. You're gonna cut the end that is, that's that got the cap on it. The foot has a little bit of air pocket. So let's see what we got here. Okay, uh, I don't know, man. Looks pretty good. I don't know what the mouthfeel is gonna be like. Uh, would you like to try a brand new V-cutter? Have you ever used a V-cutter? Oh yeah. You have? I'll not, you. A, not on one of these tips. Wow, that's a great draw, I'm gonna tell you. That's pretty good. So right off the bat, not lit. Got great tobacco flavor. So, you know, tobacco, it takes on the, even on a cheap stick, it takes three years from the time you seed, start growing the plant, to the time you make a cigar on a cheap stick. 
So sticks are, they ferment the uh, tobacco in the aging process. This is nice. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I think smoke just lit his. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to light up this piece of wood, do it old school. So there's a lot of guys that you go out places and they're going to light for you, especially guys that uh, run upscale humidors. And what they're going to do is they're going to use a piece of wood. And what we do when we, when we toast the foot, they'll do it forever and ever 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 forever and ever and ever. And then they'll hand you a cigar that's already not only toasted, but never been drawn. We doing business over there, guys? Is that what's happening here? Big, big business. So this V cut, a lot of guys do it. I'm we, if we're being honest, I'm way late to the party. Garrett, Dud, you've been smoking cigars how long, buddy? I've uh, grown up in the industry, but I've probably actively been smoking cigars for a couple of years now. So you grew up in the industry, and you still straight cut? I still straight cut. I've right? always straight cut. Straight I've never V cut, but everybody's on to the V cut. And the truth is, I've had a few cigars that wouldn't draw, and I've had to cut way back into them, and the cap kind of gets mutilated because I've had to go so far. And you know, you can sometimes squeeze a cigar, and you can feel a little, a little tight spot. And I'm like, guys, it's right there. And I've had to cut past it and I've got a good draw. Now we talked about this yesterday when we were doing that, uh, me and Garrett were talking about the Perdomo anniversary that we reviewed, talked about, you know, have, or no, it wasn't, it was on that, uh, it was on the box pressed uh, stick I smoked the other day and I can't even remember what it was, but it was tight. We talked about a draw right. I don't have one. So I'm hoping that I needed a new cutter anyways. These have, uh, pick this up once again, Tobacco Junction. This is a Zycar V cut. You know, there's a lot of cutters, but this one for sure, I know people that have had it, that have sent it back because they weren't happy with it. It's got a lifetime guarantee. So you may pay a little more right up front, but the truth is, how can it not be worth it? So smoke at it. Smoke, have you lit up yet? Okay. Hey buddy, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good. Smooth. It's very smooth, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's uh, kind of a, got a little almond. I don't think it's by any stretch a mild stick, though. No. I'm definitely getting spice, but it's not like a black pepper spice. It's almost like. I'm not sure. It's almost like a cayenne. I don't want to say cayenne pepper because I don't want to scare anybody off. It's not like, oh, my lips are on fire. But it's kind of that kind of a Cajun spicy that you get. It's not really a black pepper spice. It's more of a pepper pepper spice, but it's not, you know, it's, it's not obnoxious. And you get, you're getting uh, almonds. What are you getting? A little bit. Little taste of almonds. Certainly, you can tell the spice for sure. So the, the rule is, you see guys that are really smokers, they'll smoke really smokers, not like us. We're just, we're just dudes. They'll puff. That's all they do. Smoke a cigar for two hours. Dude, I, you know, I know that's what I'm supposed to be doing, but I don't like to take a draw off of it. What about you, man? Okay. You a light puffer, you like to robustly draw that smoke. I like to know I drew off of it. I'm not gonna George Burn it. George Burn it. I know, dude. All day long. 
you know, you never saw him without a cigar. They say All the same the thing about Winston Churchill. Yeah. So uh, this is just smooth. This is smooth, classic tobacco. Uh, there's a slight, there's a slight chocolate note coming through, a cocoa note. And it's after, it's almost like a residual. I didn't pick it up when I was smoking initially. So somebody said, dude, are you chewing that smoke? Well, dude, I am. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit. And then I kind of roll it around my, uh, it's kind of like I'm rolling it around uh, on my taste buds. So I was talking to my wife about this. My wife is not a super cigar person by any stretch of the imagination. But you know, the enjoyment is that they're all so different flavor-wise and it's enjoyable past time. It's a great hobby. The more you know about cigars, the more interesting it becomes. You know, believe it or not, it's starting to change already. So look what's happening. So we've smoked it. I'm gonna use this little pointer here, this piece of cedar as a pointer. So we lit it up off the foot and it started to burn and I got pepper right off the bat. Somewhere right in here as it started to transition to the body of the uh, cigar, it started to pick up a little sweetness maybe uh, in the form of a cocoa. Yeah, and a, and a little sweetness, a little creaminess. So it's already in this little bit of stick. We've had, we've had one, two, three. We've had like four flavor changes, which is the point. The point is, is when the blender does this, is to the way it's rolled this way, is it's going to taste different. It's not just because, wow, well, look at this cool stick I did. It's not like I don't want to offend anybody, but if you watch Snoop Dogg and uh, Seth Rogen, it ain't like a cross joint that you did it because it's kind of cool to do. Oh man, that ain't what this is. It's actually a point for it. And so that's the deal. So it's already changed flavors. So this is really, and I've had some that didn't really, that they're supposed to, that's the whole point of it. It stacks up the, stacks up the, the resin or the uh, oils at a different rate. All right, we'll be back. We'll catch you guys uh, in the halfway point. Okay, guys, so I told you we were gonna make it to the halfway point, didn't, man. We're in the second, third. And I gotta tell you, the thing that has been so noteworthy that when we were talking about the other end of the stick on the uh, Perfecto end, it changed three or four times like it's supposed to as it stacked up right off the bat. I'm talking that it went from super spicy hit to now you can still taste some spice. Uh, the cocoa is really coming through. I'm starting to pick up uh, more cream. I'm not picking up so much coffee. What about you? This is an extremely good drawing stick. It's not just totally free going to smoke itself, but man, what a quality stick. So this is uh, supposed to be their upper end of their factory, the sticks that they produce all the time. Smoke, how's yours changed? What do you think? It's gotten sweeter. Um, certainly tastes the cocoa. It's got a super easy draw. Man. Probably not one I would, you know, smoke all the time because oh, no. of the price, but it certainly is well worth the money. I don't know if we, I don't know if we said this, but if we're keeping it real, now I may have smoked a thirty dollars cigar before because, you know, I've been to some corporate functions where you know people are buying cigars for you, and it wouldn't surprise me if somebody tried to impress me by giving me some stick, and I probably was impressed, but I have never bought a thirty-five dollars stick before, and. Uh, I think it's worth it. You know, yeah. am I going to smoke them all the time? Dude, I can't afford to smoke them all the time. No. You know, but maybe if I was 
if I was uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger or <laughs> Michael Jordan, you know, yeah. smoking six a day, could be six really good sticks like this. This yep. is definitely, this is certainly, this is certainly at the top of the heap of cigars I've smoked. Oh, yeah. And you know, there's some flavor profiles that I really enjoy and we've talked about it. There's a few that I've reviewed that when I go back and look at my reviews, I go, wow, I remember that stick. That really stands out. Because if we're being honest, I smoke a lot of cigars. I try to smoke, I, we talked about this. Do I smoke a different cigar every day? Pretty close. There's a couple of days that I go and I, I, you know, I double back and smoke some that I've already smoked. And I've got my daily smokes that I smoke. But I try to smoke something different all the time because there's so many out there, especially with all the boutique stuff. But there's very few that I smoke that I'm like, man, that's one of those that I want really more and more of. I want to just, I can't get enough of it. And uh, this is one of those that, man, it's right up there at the top. But you said something earlier about, what did you say about the spice? Well, at first, you know, you can feel it in the back of your throat and everything. But, right. You know, it's gotten real smooth and uh, it's just real pleasant. So this is, we talk about interesting sticks. So that's a, smoke makes a, a good point. So that's what I look for. I don't want it to be the same stick all the way through. I want it to, you know, it's like a good book that you read, it, it just changes, man. The story changes a good movie. The story changes a good road trip. It ain't the same thing. You get a variation. And man, this is pretty exciting. This is a pretty exciting smoke. Yeah. All right, we're gonna keep smoking. We'll uh, talk to you in the final third. Hey, so uh, we're not in the, we're not in the uh, final third yet. But Smoke just uh, said, hey man, you know, you ever set one down? We've talked about this, but let's talk about it again. Have you ever set one down and walked away? Because uh, I'm gonna circle, I'm gonna, I got sidetracked. So Smoke has a life outside of being a president of an MC. My MC, I might add. He's my presidente. But outside of that, dude, he drag races, builds cars, great fabricator, metal worker, the whole deal. And he, uh, works at a surgical center. Can I say that on this deal? He yeah. works at a surgical center where he's uh, an, uh, an x-ray tech, right? Correct. So he's got a lot of things going. So there's times when he's been in the shop working on a, a project and it's gone out or he's got sidetracked or he got called away. With a two-year-old. With, and with a two-year-old. <laughs> and, uh, and he's had to come back to it. And he said, hey, you know, there's times that it goes out, I'll light it up totally changes the flavor and not for the best. No question. Now, in, in, for clarity, I do, I've had it happen all the time. We've talked about that. I get sidetracked working on a project. I'm not sure I've ever let one go an hour, but that, you know, I for sure let it go 15 or 20 minutes. So it's totally cool. So I can't imagine that it would change much. But we talked about uh, how there's a trick. And so I said, hey, man, there's a trick. We've talked about it. But the trick is, after it goes out, I get my lighter and I light the crap out of it. I'm talking, I absolutely get it hot. So it's, it's a fermented piece of, it's fermented and you ferment it to, to try to get the ammonias out of it. But still, there's going to be some ammonias and stuff that you've sucked through the stick. And I think that and the, and the, the taste of the, the, the charred ash or something, I don't know, is what you're tasting. But I, I light it up. I light it, get it super hot until it's almost a flame, and then I blow out. You know, and the truth is, I blow out pretty robustly. And I do it for 1,001 with that, probably two or three seconds max. And then some guys light them again and smoke them. I, usually I find that it's still lit. And I smoke it, and it totally changes the flavor. I'm not saying it's going to be as good as uh, you know as it was to start with, but I've never found it just offensive. And so, how long do I smoke a stick? I suspect I'm going to smoke this one all the way down. But I got sticks I smoked that didn't go out, and you know, for what and uh, Garrett, we were talking earlier, and Garrett's like, man, it's so subjective. You know, it's just personal preference. So I get some that as soon as they start tasting bad, 
I chunk them. So if I can't get it to, to taste good by purging it, then I chunk it. So that's what I do. But you know, there, if anybody else has a different way after it's been out to kind of get the flavor back where it's not just bitter, uh, foul tasting stick that you're in your mouth just to smoke, because I don't do that. I want to enjoy it. And you know what? Dude, I ain't made of money, but the truth is, I got enough money that I ain't smoking something that tastes like shit. I'll throw it out and light another one. So there you go. All right, East Texas Cigar Tribe. I'm not exactly entering the uh, final third, however smoke. We're talking about, we got a couple of friends here. We got Alan and Adam. And uh, this is a video we're doing for East Texas Cigar Tribe review, a little group on Facebook. So we were talking about smoking fast. We got two faster smokers. I'm a little bit of a slower smoker typically. So we're gonna start it now because he's well into into the last third. So let's hear it, dude. What are you picking up? Well, it's still kind of sweet. I don't have the, uh, the thick uh, spice. It's kind of real smooth. Kind yeah, of. man, the spice has gone away kind of. Yeah. So you know what? We read a review on uh, Cigar International or somewhere, and it said we're supposed to be picking up coffee. So I told you earlier, I picked up cream. Uh, uh, Ed was picking up cream. He was picking up uh, some cocoa as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was picking up cocoa. I went from cocoa to a really a definite chocolate hit. From a cocoa to a chocolate hit, but I'm still not picking up coffee. No. It's been a good smoke the whole time. Super draw the whole way, great burn the whole way. Uh, I did manage to drop the cherry on my chest on my favorite Guinness shirt. So we've had a small faux pas, but it's a great smoke so far. Yeah, real good. So, uh, what are you smoking, man? I Adam, what are you smoking? A Mi Corita by Steve Sokka. All right, let me see if I can turn this around for you. So. Mi Corita by Mi Steve Sokka. Mi Corita, Steve Sokka. Yes. And Alan. So, you're a big Steve Sokka fan. So I he, am. We were talking about it. So, he's got some $100 stick. Which he, stick is that? That is the Unicorn. Um I personally have never tried it. It's definitely on my bucket list, but never tried it myself. So what do you like about Steve Sokka's, uh, what, you know, what draws you to him? Uh, consistency. He's a blender, right? He's a blender, He yes. actually blends his own, he not just the He used to be the CEO for um, Liga Pravada for yep. Drew Estates, yep. um, and then ventured off and did his own thing. Um, just the consistency and the quality of his six. Uh, I've never had one I didn't like. So, Alan, what are you lighting up over there? Uh, this one's the uh, Illusion One Off. Nice. It's a uh, fairly light smoke, a lot of cream, a lot of caramel, a little bit of toffee. Um, for the price that you pay for it, I don't think it's fair. You're paying almost like eleven dollars to stick for something this small, it's a Petit Robusto. Yeah. Uh, maybe more actually. They, they went on the sale bin. They're now like seven bucks or something like that so about seven eight dollars yeah i'll give it a I'll, I'll give it a try but so once again we're at tobacco junction on troop highway in beautiful picturesque tyler texas and uh they have a you just brought up a good point they got a bin of cigars that are well aged and it's do, do we dare call it a bargain bin it is how it do is. they well, how do you do, why, why do you think the sticks make it there uh just because they don't move Dude, I bought a Monte Cristo. I got two or three out of there. I got a Monte Cristo and some Crystal Balls there that I don't think should have been yeah, there. They there were in the discount bin. Yeah, Cavalier's in there, and Cavalier's an awesome cigar for ten dollars a stick. Yeah, and they're in there in the sale bin, but no, it doesn't move around here as much. I don't think I picked up. I don't think anything I bought was over seven dollars in that bin. Yeah. And they were ten and twelve dollars six. That are now seven bucks. Exactly. Dude, can't beat that. So what do you got there? You got a camera? That's a fancy camera. Yeah. I just I'm a photographer, so there's a new camera I got set up for an engagement photo shoot this afternoon. Nice. Two of them. Very nice. So is that what you do for a living? No, that's just my uh, supplemental to supplement these. I hear you. Side so yeah. guys, we're uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this off. Uh, you know, once again, great place to smoke. Uh, this lounge is awesome. They, if you come in, you need to buy a cigar from here. Don't be bringing your sticks from outside buy a you know buy a new stick go out front in the bargain bin if nothing else find you something you haven't smoked uh come back here if you forgot your uh lighter they got table lighters if you forgot a cutter they got cutters here 
So come in, sit down, and enjoy yourself. You can bring in alcohol here as well. You know, this ain't a place to come get hammered. You know, bring you a little flask, have you a little cocktail, uh, and come in and smoke with friends. We just met these two guys, great guys, and we're totally enjoying it. So that's it, man. East Texas Cigar Tribe, peace out. See you on the flip side.